All Hands on Tech! It's time for All Hands on Tech. Climb on board as hosts Amina and Isaac explore all the amazing things happening in Nova Scotia's tech sector. Each episode, we will chat with local experts to uncover the secrets of what makes Nova Scotia the best place for collaboration, innovation, and creativity. All Hands on Tech is proudly produced by Digital Nova Scotia, the industry association for Nova Scotia's growing tech sector. It's a known fact that technology surrounds us each and every day and provides us the opportunity to leverage our perspective and reality. But technology also allows us to shift our realities and even enter different realities with the click of a button. My name is Isaac, and today Amina and I are joined by Emily Smith, CEO of Modestry. Well, maybe let's start by getting our guest to introduce herself. And your journey to here today. Yeah, yeah and this uh, beautiful sunny day in Halifax. Great. Well, thank you for having me here. It's, it's a pleasure to be here as well. So my name is Emily Smith, and I am the CEO and co-founder of a company called Modestry. We are a software company in Halifax, Nova Scotia, and we service a number of global clients in the way that they digitalize part of their processes and use digital tools to do training and in-service support. Awesome. And has this always been a passion of yours? Like what kind of sparks that interest to, to create Modestry? Well, the interest to create Modestry really evolved in some of the market needs for areas in which you take um, and deliver training in a 3D environment for the purposes of being able to visualize what a process or procedure actually is. So that really is part of the technical skills side of things where you're looking at not the, the physical object, but in a virtual environment, what are the processes and procedures that you would do on a physical object? And how do you do that in a virtual environment? Oh, super, super cool. cool. Yeah, that really is. And when when was Modestry first formed? Modestry was founded 11 years ago now. Wow. And so it's been around for a little bit of time now. We started um, it started really as a as a couple uh, people who were in the environment. I come from an operations background, a finance background, and the other co-founder came from a technical background, software development, and really we looked at the overall market need for the way that people needed to visualize and do training and then decided that uh, we would start a company in Halifax in the way that people were going to do training. So we've we've evolved since then as well. We've grown to a team of uh, just under 50 individuals wow. in Halifax on the software development side, 3D modeling, um, web development, and really it spans a uh, you know, quite an area for, for growth in the way that companies are deploying their training and then also leveraging digital tools because mm -hmm. a lot of those companies where they need to be able to train on a complex asset or they want to be able to train those who are their employees too on how to, you know, operate and maintain technical assets, then they're also looking at what do they do in the field? Like how do they deliver service? So leveraging digital tools to provide connectivity of remote support in the field, um, digitalizing part of your processes of a work card or how you need to perform a particular uh, work instruction. Those are all areas where Modestry helps global companies in the way that they do their work and the way they will do their work in the future. That's Super cool. cool, yeah. Really adaptable to anything and everything the market needs nowadays, which is exciting. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of transformation and digital transformation happening in a lot of traditional industries, which includes those who, uh, you know, are original equipment manufacturers or include those who have uh, employees who are in the technical trades or technical side of things and need to know operations procedures, maintenance procedures. So, uh, yeah, so we're going to kick things off here with some super quick rapid fire questions. So there's just three questions. Just first thing off the top of your head when we when we ask a question. Um, and Amina, do you want to start us off? Yeah. So work from home or work from the office? For me personally, I, I enjoy working more in the office side of things because I find it more distracting being at home, mostly because I have two little kids. Aww. And so that uh, that ended up being more of a you know work in the office type of thing. But for, for us as a company, then we're really flexible. Mm -hmm. And then we also do have team members. We have team members in Ontario. We've got team members uh, nice. in other parts of Canada as well, um, in New Brunswick and 
also team members who are a little bit more global too that uh, are over in Europe as well. Sweet. So really Exciting. that makes it uh, you know, quite dynamic and you can still feel part of the team, right? Yeah. Whether you're virtual or you're in person, even if you live up the road and you're virtual, that's totally exactly. fine yeah. too. Yeah. Um, next question here is lobster roll, donair or veggie burger? Definitely a lobster roll. That yeah. is uh, the true maritime uh, answer right there, right? Yeah. Yes. A lobster roll for sure. Um, okay, the third one. Best piece of advice you've ever received? Hmm, that's a hard one. What I would say is the best piece of advice that I've ever received is that uh, you should be open and to have that level of openness because it can really result in different opportunities and different opportunities that you might not have uh, envisioned or how you envisioned them. Mm. That's solid advice. It is, yeah. yeah. You know, you might have a goal in mind, but it might take you down different paths to get to that goal. But if you have that goal set, you know, you know what, you know where you're going. Yeah, absolutely. So, what's it like to be the CEO of Modestry? Yeah, I can share uh, lots of areas there. Uh, I would say that really in being an entrepreneur and being part of the tech ecosystem in Nova Scotia, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of change, there's a lot of adventure, and uh, no day is really ever the same. And that's one of the that's one of the areas that I really enjoy in in being an entrepreneur and being part of the uh, tech centered spaces, and also being able to really speak with clients and uh, show them different ways that technology can really play a transformational role in the way that they do their business and the way that they can you know, achieve new revenue opportunities for their business as things go forward. That's really a passion, I would say, overall and uh, an area that we like to participate in. Um, what is extended reality in XR? And um, if you want to get into that a little bit, what are some examples of like the projects you've worked on that focus on augmented and virtual reality applications? Sure, that's a great question. So extended reality overall um, encompasses a wide variety of technologies. It's really um, areas where you're looking at visualization. And so you're you're visualizing whether that's going to be in a virtual reality environment where you typically you have a, a virtual reality center goggles where you would put those on and then that's how you consume and visualize that environment. Um, it can also be immer uh, immersing immersing yourself in more of a, a computer-based environment, but you're in a 3D environment, so you mm. can navigate around mm. that 3D environment. That's cool. Um, also on a mobile device, so you're looking at uh, ways that you can have that 3D virtual environment and then be instructed of how you go through different procedures or different operational components. And then in augmented reality, this is where the real world is still in view of the learner or of those who are consuming the content. So that can be that you're looking at, uh, you're looking through a mobile device and you're seeing the real world and you're seeing digital overlays on top of that. Ah, okay. Or you're looking at it through an augmented reality headset, similar to say the HoloLens, where you have a HoloLens on and then you see still the physical environment around you and you're augmented. So with do you remember the the Pokemon got to catch them all game where oh, like it Pokemon was Go. so that would be an augmented reality not a virtual reality because that's it's correct. just like adding a layer of like yeah the Pokemon Go that's yeah, the yeah. one it's like <laughs> Connor's back there laughing <laughs> it's like adding the layer of all the like Pokemon people or animals, whatever they're considered. I know all the Pokemon fans listening are like, Amina, what are I you know, doing? I'm a terrible fan, but it's like <laughs> that layer of, it's already, they're already at the park, but you just see, okay. And a virtual reality would be like, if I'm taking a tour of a house that I'm not physically in, because it's, it's just existing there. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, I mean, in an augmented reality, you're augmenting or adding additional digital content right. into the real life environment and then in virtual reality you are having a digital world that is replacing your, the physical world that you're in so it, they really have very different use cases as well yeah. so if you're looking at um, areas in augmented reality if for example you had a physical piece of equipment in front of you and then you wanted to have a 
you know, work instruction and you need to be able to say, oh, what's that physical piece of equipment? And I'm going to have a referenceable work instruction of what I need to do in order to service that piece of equipment, for example. Mm -hmm. Then you're looking at, you know, augmenting your physical environment with additional digital content like, you know, digital work instruction or, you know, maybe a PDF manual or images or additional areas that are going to help you do your your job for that day. And then the other area for virtual reality is when you really need to be in a separate space than where you're at. So if you're if you're trying to, you know, put yourself into a scenario, for example, that you're not going to be in, in, in real life, then you're looking at putting it in virtual reality because then you can show this is, this is what would happen or this is the, the additional procedure in a virtual space. Really cool. Yeah. Do you have any, a uh, little bit of a loaded question, but do you have any projected predictions on the future of augmented and virtual reality? Like what, what are you potentially thinking might happen in the next five to 10 years? Yeah, that's a great question, and I think that there's there's been a lot of um, there's been a lot of progression, and then there's also been a lot of change as well overall in the industry. Really, now, I mean, everybody is carrying around a device in their pocket, yeah. which has the ability to look at tablet based or mobile based mm -hmm. augmented reality type of content on it, right? And that's really core in the way that. Uh, you see a lot of adoption with the technology and the tools that people are used to consuming and then they can deploy those in their everyday yeah. life. I was going to say it's almost like we augmented our reality with all these like mobile apps that we have because we're going through every day. We're paying with not real money. It's like it's an augmented reality. It's like it's, it's an app on a phone. We're like checking what times are like when you're living in a bigger city or maybe even the bus schedule here, I think, has like a. Uh, an app like we're not really like physically going on to a, a map and being like oh when is the bus landing here like we're using our phones to do that we're like we're ordering things online like isn't that like uh, some sort of version of it well when you're looking at um you know your physical space there's a lot of areas where for example augmented reality comes into a, like your everyday like like for example um you look at a, a like a menu and what does that menu actually bring up or translation um, or, for example, looking at uh, looking at areas where you're going to visualize the process, or you know, have a particular kind of asset in front of you that doesn't you know exist in the physical world. And just to, to um, see if there was anything that you've personally worked on, like augmented or virtual, that was a really cool project. Like as an example of either anything that comes to mind. Yeah, there's a lot that our team has worked on or that, you know, our clients have produced using the software suite that Modestry provides. And uh, a lot of those deal with areas where you're going to visualize your, your process or um, you need to be able to train staff on complex kind of uh, maintenance procedures or you want to do some testing of does this individual know the appropriate procedures and can they react in in an environment where uh, they need to be able to do like an operations or a maintenance procedure sweet yeah sweet. are there any sectors in particular that your team works with primarily so like i see huge um benefits of like augmented and uh, vr and ar in like healthcare and stuff is that a sector that you guys work with or is there any other sectors yeah, most of the sectors that we work with are those that uh, need to provide technical training. So they have uh, they have physical assets where they are going to show procedures on those physical assets, like a, a, here's an appropriate operational procedure on a complex asset or a maintenance procedure in order to service that asset. And so really it spans a number of industries, um, you know, healthcare, you know, where you're looking at complex type of equipment in healthcare is an area that Modestry would service. Additionally, you know, if you've got complex assets, for example, on a, a ship or assets that are in the field where it's more complicated in order to be able to visualize, well, what does this do? Um, what are the maintenance procedures that I need to be able to do? And to provide training on those, that's a, that's a core area that we would service. You know, I was you with you saying that um, I thought I'm thinking back at like when I was a student and you know how sometimes when you're learning something as like 
textbook is like physics or chemistry or like and you're doing like courses where you you have to really visualize something like mm. a a 2d picture in a textbook with like labels just wouldn't do it i'm wondering like how that could change like education and the education system if one day it were a point where like students are able to really like actually see it 3d and and touch different things and play with it and dissect um some of the concepts that they're learning from a textbook that would i think like more more kids would be excited about learning in that way right i, I could see like the great applications to education as well is that something that you've ever dealt with or it, it's yet to come that's actually an area that is i uh, once people get to know some of the technology and how it can be consumed that's often uh, an area that people will bring up, like the transformation of learning that mm -hmm. comes with consuming this type of technology and the way that you're providing information and consuming information. And really, in learners today, there's a focus on, can I actually interact with this? Right. Uh, you know, r reading hundreds of pages of text is, you know, an area that people know that there's different options that are out there and you can learn um, so much in the way that you can visualize right yeah. so mm -hmm. that that is it is really an area of learning and and part of how the transformation occurs want to celebrate an active or emerging leader in your community the tech forward awards presented by rbc features eight unique awards designed to celebrate highlight and recognize organizations and individuals who are making a difference in the ict sector in nova scotia Nominees in all categories may be self-nominated, nominated by industry colleagues, or nominated by their employers or organizations. It only takes two minutes to nominate someone. Nominate today at www.digitalnovascotia.com slash program slash tech forward awards. I'm thinking of another good example, um, how Google, like if you look up like tiger or something you can go into google and it will show you yes. like a literal tiger and in your size, room and yeah. you're in the size of it because i think uh like to your point exactly like so many youth are learning about all these really cool concepts or animals or theories but they can't visualize it so mm -mm. they don't understand you know how big a tiger is but mm -hmm. now with the help of yep. you know this type of technology you can bring a tiger in your room without having to actually pay for a tiger to go to a zoo yeah. uh, so it's really interesting and i think we've very much become like visual learners because we yeah. have so much visual stimuli now it's not just a tv it's it's uh, it's through our phones it's through the internet it's through the way that we're consuming media so there's so like we're very much ver like visually stimulated so to to be able to ap apply that to how we learn i could see it like connecting a huge um, dot for a lot of yeah a, a huge gap that's existed for so long that you know so many organizations and sectors and industries really need and definitely. don't think about definitely yeah where's you have a great point there because where there is you know contextualization that comes with that visual aspect to it um we've had clients of ours that uh, really you look at what do you see in a 2D space? What do you see in like your technical manual or what do you see in your 3D model? And then you look at the the spatial attributes mm -hmm. if you're able to bring it into the space and either you know put virtual reality goggles on and immerse yourself directly in that space mm -hmm. or have the asset physically in front of you, you know, have the asset virtually in front of you in an augmented reality type of environment. Like you really see, oh wow, this is the the gravity of what would be in front of me mm -hmm. and this is what it would feel like even with sound for example like what, what would that environment sound like yeah. and or, you know replicating some of the areas of uh, what do I need to do in this type of environment really helps bring home the experience so that people feel like this is this is an area that I should be learning this is an area I should be engaged in and mm. it causes a lot of um you know, your attention is drawn to experiencing that environment. Yeah. And so. you mentioned um, like a huge factor for you folks is that being able to provide this type of software and systems, um, it's it's very cost saving, but it's also it also helps keep people safe kind of thing. Like that's not only a lot of money, but it can also be pretty dangerous to, to go out to see and stuff. Um, but with the help of this type of software, you're able to do that from the safety of, you know, your workplace or, you know, wherever in the world and not have to be on a boat in the middle of nowhere testing out these products so that's really interesting well i think in a learning centered environment where you want to you know teach someone overall you know this is this is the process like this is the procedure in a learning environment you're, you're looking to provide that in a way that 
feels realistic Mm -hmm. but then it also passes that knowledge along you know as best as possible as quick to the to the real thing but then if there are scenarios where either you don't encounter it very much because you know it's a safety centered scenario you want to teach somebody what to do in a particular you know dangerous type of scenario then it's great to be able to replicate that situation in a virtual environment and and pass that along and uh where you're leveraging different technologies to make it feel real, then uh, then it helps with passing that information. Yeah. So you mentioned Monastery operates globally, which is really, really exciting. But why did you pick Halifax as your headquarters? What was the uh, honing factors? Um, well, Halifax is the headquarters is really because when I, like when I graduated, uh, I wanted to you know, be based in Halifax. I started my career out in in, in Halifax. And so because uh, myself and the co-founder were, were resident here, this was a natural place where we wanted to grow the company. And uh, it, Halifax to me has always been a place where I go, there's so much that's here. There's so much beauty and vibrancy and great people that are in Halifax and when we started the company 11 years ago now there was not as much of a technology ecosystem there was not as much of a you know small business growing into you know medium sized type of a business there weren't as many that had that story or had that mm-hmm. trajectory so now it's it's really inspiring as well to see the type of technology ecosystem that exists here today and the way that we can collaborate amongst you know ourselves as part of you know the technology sector that's here what's your favorite part you think about working from halifax well i think one of the my favorite parts is that uh, it's an area that is it, it's a small area but we also have so much that is here and i mean there's access to global centered environments um we we have access to nature within 25 minutes away from you know the downtown core Uh, there's a lot of balance and lifestyle that is here as well where you can go to a lake uh, and Mm. you, you can but you can also go to the movies and you can take a flight to Europe like there's a lot of connectivity that that is in Halifax yeah this I think is true what's it that uh, no matter where you are in Nova Scotia I think you're no more than 30 minutes 25 minutes away from the ocean yeah something yeah. like that don't yeah. quote me on it I <laughs> someone be like it's actually you know 43.5 minutes or something but uh, it's 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 definitely under an hour which is really cool and a lot of people I, I recently just was in Ontario and I was like I was like, it's so weird for some of these people to have never been near like a actual saltwater beach, like yeah. ever. Yeah. And that's so perplexing to me. I know. But that's the beauty of Nova Scotia. It is. It, that is definitely one of the strong suits of Nova Scotia. And I grew up in Ontario. So there were areas that, you know, to experience the ocean, right? For a lot of people, that was, that's a great thing. You have to go to you have to go to the coast, right? Yeah, to experience definitely. the ocean there. And we also have so many lakes that are part of Nova Scotia. Yes, yeah. definitely. It's time for Tech Tips. If you could give us some tips um, for those looking to explore innovation within Atlantic Canada, what would they be? I would say there's a few things there. Um, one would be that there's quite a good network that is in Nova Scotia. And so if you're interested in that, then reach out and give it a go to start. And I think another area would be that, uh, you know, I come from a background too on the operational side of things and starting a company that is very technology focused. And one of the areas that I think is probably a little bit more of a misconception overall is that to do tech, those are always code related type of roles. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of roles that are needed in a tech company. And some of those roles are quality assurance, uh, project management, you know, the financial aspects, uh, the sales aspects. Mm -hmm. There is a lot that goes into a a tech company. So I would say, you know, really broaden those perspectives that are there. They're all important roles. You know, software development, super important role as well. And uh, to be open to exploring those as part of the journey. Sweet. And is there any networking event or conference or anything that you went to in Atlantic Canada that stands out as a time where you made some really good connections? 
Uh, I think there's a few different uh, technology fen- uh, centered events. Um, there were more of them that happened, you know, kind of pre pandemic, yeah. <laughs> right? We um, have to dig into the memory box, you know, two years ago on uh, all the good events that happened here. They're starting up again, but. Right, yeah. right. And I mean, uh, Digital Nova Scotia, too, provided, uh, you know, mixer centered events as well. It is really great to have informal opportunities to network and collaborate across the industry and that openness is is a good point of uh, being able to just sit down talk to somebody and say oh that's interesting what do you guys do and Mm -hmm. the connections that can happen in an area where you're not uh, you know looking for something necessarily in particular but just looking at the the network that is there overall is really good and I would say it's good to be able to participate in those informal type of atmosphere. Yeah. And we, we did introduce our member mixer um, and it's going to happen every couple months. By the time this airs, obviously the, f- the first one would have happened, but we have one happening um, and we have another one coming up in September and every two months after that. So definitely any listener who's interested in networking, um, we ha- check out our events calendar yeah. because we do have a couple of those and um if any if any other one comes to mind emily let us know and just put it out there yeah no we're we're always excited to see all the in-person stuff and especially the informal things um because to your point exactly it's it's nice to meet and connect with people without having that pressure on you i guess to to network and really be your brand like you can just kind of be yourself hang out with some people with some other organizations have some drinks have some you know Mm -hmm. good food and laughs and you know not have to focus on the business side of things and make some personal connections too. because people like to connect with you personally even though they know that you know this is your emily and you work at modestry and this is what you do professionally they also want to connect on that level of oh i know emily she's great and so of course i'll you know i'll be more invested in in using her services because it's like I, I like her as a person she's she's really good to connect with as a person people we're human beings at the end of the day and yeah. we crave that so that that's the why. running theme the, i know <laughs> yeah. we always get back to this yeah <laughs> I, I think that's an important point though mm-hmm. is when you know re- really that's something we try and foster too is like bring your whole self in in the way that you you come to work or the yeah. way that you like it's all part of part of life right yeah and so you you want to feel like there isn't you know a, a a focus that you have to be a particular type of individual or a particular type of brand right yeah. that uh, you can be open and then be yourself right yeah yeah so uh, Amina's question was a perfect segue and I'm gonna hijack this because I know you're eyeballing me you're like dang I wanted to say this um, into our next question um, but we have to ask mostly because we know you are a frequent flyer to conferences of course when uh, COVID wasn't uh, wasn't a thing but as I said they're slowly coming back up but what is the best or strangest thing that has ever happened to you at a conference um let's see there's there's <laughs> one. <laughs> um i think that you, you know really one of the things is uh, i've been to lots of conferences right so even you know recently now that things are opening back up again you know going to different conferences as well and uh, you always experience new things at a conference right mm. you always um you get to know you know people you get to know companies and there there is that level of formality at a conference right where you're looking at uh you know pe- people are representing and looking at you know selling particular things or yeah, looking yeah. at uh you know how they're portraying themselves in more of a trade show centered environment but at the same time it's really it's experiential right. because they're in person and so i think one of the the key areas for me is just getting to experience some of those uh, physical aspects as well um you know seeing some of the products that are that are there and and uh you know seeing for us we work with a training and simulation side and uh, you know i was recently at a conference where i i got to experience like what it was like to sit in a particular suspension seat mm. as you're going along um in in a vehicle and part of that is you you can explain these things um yeah, but it's different when you're in person right yeah. and for for modestry we've worked with companies 
to visualize part of their products. So like visualize products in a virtual environment. Mm -hmm. And um, we, I went to a trade show recently that was over in Europe and, you know, I'm, I'm meeting the client for the first time in person and having that interaction and then also seeing the physical, physical product that we had developed a virtual scenario of this is how they can explain, you know, their offering and how that works. And I think for us, that is a, just a great connectivity point mm. is to be able to experience that in-person side of things and uh, also just uh, be able to have that networking. Yeah. So being somebody in the VR space, do you think you would ever attend a virtual conference? Ooh. Well, I think, you know, for, for us, you know, part of the area that I would add to that is that there's different ways of consuming information. Mm-hmm. and you know, from our, from our perspective, yes, you can consume it in a, in a virtual reality centered environment. You can consume it on a, most of the time you're consuming it on a desktop or a tablet center type of environment, right? There's a purpose for each of those. So one of the things is not to have the technology kind of get in the way of what you're trying to accomplish, but to mm-hmm. make sure it it is most suitable for, for the purpose, right? Mm-hmm. So for a virtual reality conference, it's it's a way that's kind of neat to engage Mm -hmm. but at the same time you miss out on that in-person interactivity that comes with that yeah so if it was a virtual reality conference where you really needed to see here's here's like a virtual representation of a physical product that you know i can't bring it to you um it it gives you more information so Mm -hmm. it serves a purpose Uh. but for the area where you're saying you know here's uh here's a conference where I'm really looking to engage with someone one on one, have those conversations, and right. there's not additional things I need to experience. Then uh, that's an area that's a bit more challenging. Absolutely, yeah. because I know, um, and, and this isn't conferences, but a lot of events they're they're opening up a virtual reality portion, right? Yeah. They're doing concerts, they're doing NBA games, they're doing that kind of thing, and. I guess for those where the purpose is to view a centered piece, like mm-hmm. somebody singing, a band, or two basketball teams playing against each other, it's fine because you don't really need that social interaction. Although yeah. it's nice. It's an added feature, of course, but it's not necessary for the purpose. So you're right. Like focusing on the purpose is definitely key. We don't have to go like bat crazy yeah. with the virtual reality. And I was, I was going to say too, so I've seen sometimes there are some conferences that they have, they happen at like a staple center or like a convention center or a hotel or whatever. And I've seen some folks god love them they recreate the entire hotel or convention center in virtual reality so that during you know the past couple years individuals who have gone to that staple event for decades are able to relive that but in a virtual reality environment and it's it's insane um but i definitely i'm i'm excited to see kind of where that goes yeah. Um, I definitely want to go to a VR concert. Absolutely. Yeah. That's Nobody's also like, thing. Yeah. no lineups for the bathroom. Nobody's like <laughs> pushing into you. Yeah. You don't have to, like, you don't, you're not going to miss anything. For the most part, you're f- center, like, front stage. Like. Yeah. Or there's even, um, now, Emily, you might correct me if I'm, if I'm saying this incorrectly or if I'm referring to this incorrectly, but there's some augmented reality concerts mm-hmm. where they will, like, project. Aren't they, aren't they doing that with ABBA? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where the, and, and that's where augmented reality, passed. is it? Yeah. Yeah, they're looking at having more of like a kind of like a visualization or a hologram type yes. of thing. Yes. Would that yeah. be considered augmented reality or? Well, you would be, consi- you really need to have the way that you're going to visualize it. So yeah, you would look at that as this is augmenting the space that I'm in. Gotcha. Because okay. Because then you're getting digital centered content, which is essentially in that scenario, like an ABBA you know, performer yeah. that yeah. is then performing as if they're right in your space with you. Yeah. I think that's cool. Like for yeah. people who can't, I mean, they could monetize for artists. That's cool because it's an extra stream of revenue. They could mm-hmm. be in two places at once and get secure two bags yeah. <laughs> from, from not even having to leave their, their studio or wherever yeah. they're at. That that's pretty cool, well, but it's not as, it, it's it's kind of different because yeah. it's not as well. I I personal. think it's interesting primarily for the aspect of individuals who might have passed, or like artists who might no longer be on this earth, but they still want to like recreate those scenarios. But I'm like, how'd you get that footage? Also, that's kind <laughs> of touchy because anything like post what they call when you're you're already dead pop, pop post mortem. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Anything post mortem, it's like who who gave the who signed off on that? Yeah. 
because they don't they can't speak for themselves yeah so that gets tricky with augmented reality too too because it's like okay if i were to pass you can just take my voice and take my my video and then create this service from me and monetize that yeah I feel like there will be a lot of like regulations in the future on how you can use people's like IP. Yeah. Just because you can doesn't mean it's yeah. ethical. Yeah, it's an interesting topic, but it's, uh, it's a topic for another day. Cause Definitely. Whole Definitely. other can of worms. But uh, thank you so much, Emily. That's all the questions that we had. I don't know if there was anything else you wanted to add, any tidbits or anything like that. I think I would add overall that... Uh, I mean, there's a lot going on in the technology center in Nova Scotia, and there's a lot of varied companies. And, you know, you we've kind of talked a little bit about how we as a technology company, you know, provide different areas to that market. And it's really interesting to see how things have grown in the sector and uh, what Nova Scotia is delivering yeah. and growing, right? And I'm really excited for w- what that opportunity offers Nova Scotians in the future and Nova Scotia being home. Yeah, it's definitely an upwards trajectory, that's for sure. Exciting yeah. times. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. It thank was uh, truly a pleasure and uh, we appreciate you taking the time out of a uh, very sunny day. <laughs> it's sunny and warm out there today. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely good to have air conditioning, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah. 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 Thanks for having me today. Thank you. Yes. Thanks for tuning in to All Hands on Tech. Interested in learning more? Visit us on our website at www.digitalnovascotia.com. We'll see you next time. This has been a Podstarter production. production.